Welcome back. What I'd like to demonstrate now are the proper um, practices for preparing objects to be milled in Rhino. There are four basic rules that we want to follow. Um, the first is that we want to work with solid objects and curves only. No open poly surfaces or surfaces. The second is that we want to make sure there are no objects in the scene other than the objects that we want to be milled. The third is that we want to make sure we separate our operations by layers. And the fourth is that we want to um, be very careful about how we position our objects within our scene. In other words, how we place our objects on the control plane. With our first rule, we want to make sure that we're working with solid objects and curves only. By solid objects, we mean something like this, a closed poly surface. The term that's usually used is watertight. We can also work with curves, as you see here. Primarily, we'll work with a solid object for the purposes of three-dimensional milling, so cutting out all these shapes you see in here. We'll use curves to help define two-dimensional tool paths. So in this case, if we look at a top view, the actual border of the piece that is to be milled. In theory, you can work with surfaces and open poly surfaces, but if you're not careful, you will ruin your milling operation. So it really is a best practice to use a closed poly surface. It's easy enough to verify whether or not this is a closed poly surface by going to your properties, select your object, and then go to the details on that object. And as I can see here, it is indeed a valid poly surface, that's excellent, and it is a closed poly surface with 18 surfaces. Now, if I got a message that it was a surface or an open poly surface, I could try to figure out exactly where the problem edges were by going to Analyze and going to Edge Tools and Show Edges. And as we can see here, I have naked edges selected and the edge color is set to hot pink. So when I select this, if there are any naked edges, they will show up in hot pink. And then what I'd have to do is go back in and join those surfaces back together to create what is called a watertight surface. In other words, conceptually, water could be poured inside of this vessel. <clears throat> There's no way the water would be able to get out. So that's rule number one. Now, rule number two is that we want to make sure there are no objects in the scene other than the objects that we plan on milling. So as we can see here, everything that we want to mill is located in the scene. I also have another layer here called material. And this is essentially the blank material that I plan on using for the milling operation. If I had another object in the scene, say this thing here or this thing over here, the problem that we're going to run into is when we go into the Rhino CNC interface and create our blank stock material, it's going to include all these pieces. Um, and that's incredibly bad because the mill is going to try to actually cut those things out. So as a best practice, make sure you have no objects other than those to be milled in your scene. Number three is you want to make sure that you have all of your operations separated into different layers. What's meant by that is that every time we perform a milling operation, say a three-dimensional parallel finishing, which will actually move the mill down into this piece, back up and through. We want to place that on, that's called an operation. We want to place that on its own layer. So as you can see here, I have the model itself on one layer. I have the material, the blank material on another layer. I have this thing called zones on a third layer. And the zones, zones refers to these, <clears throat> excuse me, these lines you see right here. We can use zones to actually isolate an area from milling so that we don't affect the rest of uh, uh, um, rest of our object. And then you'll also see that I have another layer called borders and paths. Borders is just that. I've actually modeled a two-dimensional curve that is a border condition. And I have a series of blue lines right here that I've labeled as paths. And we'll use that to simply take out a large area of material in our milling operation. Fourth rule is you want to make sure that you have your objects properly positioned in the scene. CNC mills do not have a, zero, a, st a static zero, zero, zero in the same way that, say, a laser cutter does. With a laser cutter, our zero, zero is always in the upper right-hand corner, and we build downward. With RhinoCam, you can set up 000, 
zero x, zero y, zero z, wherever you want. As a best practice, we want to set zero, zero, zero to be located in what's called the southwest corner. So we're actually using, if I move this out of the way, we're using the zero, zero, zero on the seaplane in Rhino as our actual zero location. So when we mill, we'll actually tell the CNC that that is zero, zero, zero right there, and we'll have it mill this way, and we'll have it mill this way. You'll also notice when I look at <clears throat> my objects to be milled in a front view, that the z-axis zero is set up so that my material is below z. So in other words, zero for the z-axis is the highest point of the material from which I am going to mill. One of the reasons we want to set it up this way is that in RhinoCam, when we go to specify all of these conditions, it operates as a, um, a sort of a, a level of redundancy. We can be positive that everything is positioned properly for the milling operation. If we accidentally set zero all the way down in the, the bottom corner here, the tool bit would then dig itself into the deck of our machine, um, pulling lots of metal out, probably shutting down the router, destroying the mill, and making all of us very unhappy. So as a best practice, zero, zero, zero should be located right there. The topmost point in the z-axis, the lowest point in the x-axis, and the lowest point in the y-axis. I hope that helps you.